Now I want to welcome the speaker. And she will be escorted by the owner. I don't want to assume. So she will be wel uh, welcome. He will be a uh, in my excitement. <laughs> he will be escorted by the owner. Come on, I appreciate Pastor Francis. Ace. Simwana Kapo. I put the post picture. I put the post picture up as this. Yay! <laughs> Amen. And I want to request uh, one boy to pray for the picture. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise because you are good and your mercies endure us forever. Indeed, we are here all by your grace and all by your mercy. We cannot count it on any one of us, O oh God, but we count it on you that we are here today. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. And I pray that as Francis delivers your word today, you will anoint him afresh you grant him the grace and the strength and the wisdom that he requires for this moment, that your children will be blessed to the praise and to the glory of your name. Therefore, we welcome you, Holy Spirit of God, to use him as the vessel for the hour to minister to the children of God. We invite you, Heavenly Father, you who is great and mighty, to come and do only that which you can do in this meeting, because this is your meeting. We love you and we honor you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. You're welcome. Come on, appreciate God. Appreciate God. Amen. You may be seated. It's such a privilege to be here. Thank you very much for coming. A ladies' meeting is a very emotionally draining meeting. And that is why we are different. Because if men were to attend this meeting for three hours, maybe they'd be admitted after this. <laughs> but that is our uniqueness. Lakini yoni jambo letu la kipekee. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, because my my mother is late. Na kwa sababu mama yangu hayupo. There is a very special woman. Kuna Mama ambaye ni wakipekee sana. Who is a sister to my mother? Ambaye ni dada ya mama yangu. Her name is Rose. Jina yake anaitwa Rose. And she came to this meeting. Na alikuja kwa huu mkutano. I want her to stand and wave. Naomba asimame atusalimie. Amen. Amen. If you if you never saw my mom. Kama haujawahi muona mama yangu. She looked like that. Because they really looked similar. Oh, praise God. And our sister there is called Beatrice. Amen. Amen. Uh, okay. uh, this meeting is so unbalanced. A lot of noise is coming from this. <laughs> Well, I want to thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank the God, the Lord of the church. Who is Jesus Christ. And the Lord in the church. The Holy Spirit. Roho for giving us this opportunity kwa nafasi hii to share his word. Lake. In absence, I want to thank Bishop. Uh, kwa kuwa Bishop ayuko karibu, nataka kumshukuru kama uh, ayuko. I want to thank Mom for the opportunity to share. Tunashukuru Mama yetu kwa kutupatia nafasi ya kushiriki. And the leadership of DOI. Na wa DOI. Together with the wonderful pastors that we serve 
with here. Pamoja na wachungaji ambao tunahudumu nao mahali hapa. A lady like uh, Pastor B Nduta. Ah, uh, mama kama Pastor Beatrice. Hey, appreciate your pastor. Ah, uh, mshangilie Pastor Beatrice. And another woman, great woman of God, Pastor Millicent Kaunda. Na mama mwingine wa kipekee, Pastor Millicent Kaunda. They are the ladies that rock in this place. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And we thank God for having such a wonderful team. Na tunashukuru Mungu kwa kuwa na kikundi cha kipekee hivyo. And the men that I represent. Na wanaume ambao nimewawakilisha. One is away in the US of A called Pastor Brian. Mmoja ako mbali sana US anaitwa Pastor Brian. One is away on the side of the beach called Pastor David. Na mwingine anaitwa Pastor David. But the lady of that house is around here Esther Kibera. Na mwanamke wa hiyo boma ko tu hapa anaitwa Esther Kibera. And then we have a wonderful gentleman called Sir Peter Kaunda. Na kuna mwanaume mwingine wa kipekee anaitwa Pastor Sir Peter Kaunda. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. And now the lady of ladies Alafu Lady of Ladies the only, <laughs> the only woman in our house Mmoja tu katika nyumba yetu Pastor Leah Wamboi Pastor Leah Wamboi Amen Amen Bwana asifiwe sana Amen Did you carry your Bibles Ulibeba Biblia yako I think we can now go straight to God's word Ah uh, tunaweza enda moja kwa moja kwa neno la Mungu. I'll be reading the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Nimekuwa nikisoma kitabu cha Wakorintho wa pili kifungu cha 7 to verse 10. Kutoka mstari wa saba mpaka wa kumi. And then shortly I'll going to give you what I will not be talking about. Na hivi karibuni nitawapatia ile ambayo Sitakuwa nikiongelelea. And then go to straight to what I'll be talking about. Alafu tutaingia moja kwa moja kwa topic yetu. Thank you very much Hilda for that wonderful talk. Asante sana kwa hiyo topic ya kipekee. Amen. Amen. Now let's read together ladies we say Ah now where I come from ladies read with an attitude. Say we have this treasure. In what? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Verse 8. Verse 10 Eh hey, your sound is so nice to the ears Kumbe sisi ndio watu naharibu hii sauti eh Now Paul is writing to the church Paulo anaandikia kanisa But before I speak about these verses Kabla ni yonge kuhusu hii mistari. I want to give you a little background of what I want to talk about. Nataka kukurudisha nyuma kidogo kwa ile ambayo naenda kuongelelea. Because there are different perceptions of what strength is. Kwa sababu kuna mambo tofauti ya kuelewa nguvu ni nini. And I want to make sure that you understand strength. Na ningependa kwanza uelewe nguvu. So that you understand what I'm going to talk about. Ili uelewe tunaongea kuhusu nini. It is also instructive to note Uh, pia ni vizuri kuelewa ya kwamba subject is strength of a woman ya kwamba uh, kichwa cha cha ujumbe wetu ni kwamba nguvu za mwanamke but not strength of women 
lakini sio nguvu za wanawake so i'm not talking about a class called women kwa hivyo sio ngelelei a wanawake but i'm talking to a person called a woman lakini naongelelea mwanamke because there is individuality in what i'm talking about kwa sababu kuna huo umoja yani wewe mwenyewe the way somebody expresses strength is different from the way you will express strength vile mtu anavyoonyesha nguvu sivyo wewe utaonyesha nguvu and it is wrong to try to be as strong as somebody else na ni vibaya sana kujifanya we uko na nguvu kama ule mtu mwingine but you can only be as strong as you are lakini unaweza kuwa na nguvu vile ulivyo meaning all of us individually have our strength kumaanisha kila mmoja wetu ako na nguvu zake and our orientation of strength is different from others na kuonyesha nguvu zetu ni tofauti na wengine we live in a place where, where we have classifications and stereotypes tunaishi mahali ambapo ku, ku kuna ule kuonyesha nguvu kwa utofauti and realize people are saying women do this na unapata watu wanasema wanawake wanafanyanga and women don't do this na wanawake hawafanyangi hivi but I, i came to tell you that you are not women lakini nimekuja kukuambia sio wanawake but you are a woman lakini wewe kama mwanamke come on are you hearing me unanisikia that the stereotype should not uh, dictate how you behave aifai ujionyeshe ama ielezee vile wewe ulivyo they say women have a very high pitch in their voices ah uh, wanawake wako na sauti kubwa katika sauti zao za but you have met women with deep voices isn't it lakini tumepata wanawake wengine wako na sauti mzito they say women cannot lift something heavy ah uh, wanawake hawezi nua kitu mzito but you've met a woman who can lift something heavy isn't it lakini umepata mwanamke anaweza inua kitu mzito women cannot understand mathematics wanawake hawaelewi hesabu but wednesday we were preached with a, a strong lady who understands mathematics lakini kuna mahali ulipata mwanamke aliye na nguvu anaelewa women are not good in esabu. engineering Uh, wanawake hawafanyangi engineering but we have women i've seen at least one this side who is a good engineer lakini tumeona mwanamke fulani ambaye amekuwa ni engineer so we are dismantling classification and talking to you as an individual kwa hivyo tunaharibu hiyo kuunganisha pamoja na tunaongea so na wewe peke ask yako. yourself ili ujiulize if mwenyewe i have to manifest strength je nitaonyesha nguvu zangu wewe how do i manifest as me Je, nitaonyesha nguvu zangu kivipi? And not as my neighbor's wife. Lakini si kama bibi ya neighbor wangu. Come on ladies, can I hear an amen? Naomba nisikie sauti. For, amen. For us to understand the strength of a woman, ili tuelewe nguvu za mwanamke, we must understand the genesis of a woman. Lazima kwanza tujue chanzo cha mwanamke. Because without that, kwa sababu mbila hiyo, you are going to try to manifest your strength like men manifest strength tutajaribu kuonyesha nguvu zako kama mwanaume wakionyesha nguvu zako when you live in a place where there is masculine deficit eh? there is a <laughs> difficulty in the way men express masculinity yes kuna ule ugumu vile wanaume wanaonyesha nguvu zao if you live in a family ukiishi kwa familia or in a setup ama kwa Muundo fulani where men mali ambapo wanaume not stood up to their place hawajasimama kwa nafasi yao the probability is uh, kuna uwezekano that you are going to fit in that shoe ya kwamba wewe utasimama mahali pale and express strength na uonyesha nguvu zako the way a missing man ought to express strength vile yule mwanaume ambaye haonekani anafaa aonyeshe nguvu zake but you realize you are going to struggle lakini utapata unangangana because god never created you to be a man kwa sababu mungu hakukuumba uwe mwanaume and god never created you to express strength like a man na Mungu hakukuumba uonyeshe nguvu kama mwanaume. Because when God created you. Kwa sababu wakati Mungu alikuumba. Remember God said it's not good for a man to be alone. Ukumbuke Mungu alisema ya kwamba si vema mwanamume kuishi peke yake. He said it is not good for a man to be lonely because man was not lonely. Hakusema si vema mwanaume kukaa ki kiupweke kwa sababu hakuwa na upweke. And the Bible says he gave Adam deep sleep. 
And from him he pulled a rib and closed the flesh thereof. Now let me disturb your mind a little bit. In this competency based uh, curriculum that we are having today children are doing a lot of things nowadays. Have you noticed? The other day I was thinking I, I'm teaching my children more than the teacher. What is the teacher really doing? Because <laughs> everything, everything they are just saying saying, go and do with your father, go and do with your mother. I'm asking, what are your teachers doing? The other day Miles came home and said, now the teacher has told us to, to, to go with a seat. So that they can a, a seat, a seat, not, not seed, seat. So that we can use it for learning. So then I asked. You don't have seats in the classroom. <laughs> he said, no, the teacher has said it is ours that he needs. So anyway, one of the things they really use in school is called this mold. What, what do they call it? Imatope. You know what Plasticin. Molding, yeah? Ni I mchanga ama hii matope ya kuunda ya kutengeneza. You know in our days we just used to mix water and uh, some soil and then we were inventive, isn't it? Unajua wakati wetu tulikuwa tunachanganya matope na mchanga na maji alafu tunatengeneza inakuwa matope. In our days we were very inventive. Siku hizi kuna mambo mingi sana imetokea. Even those days women used to eat a wall. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because walls were ma made of soil, eh? So, if you are craving for, you know what I mean, eh? You are craving for, you just pick a side of a wall and you, re you realize with the time there is a hole. Unachukua wall, alafu unakuja, unapata kumbe kuna shimo. But nowadays you can go to your WhatsApp. Lakini squeeze unaenza enda WhatsApp. And maybe ask a friend. Ama ulize rafiki yako. Where did you get soil girl? Mm. Ulipata huyu m... huyu <laughs> <laughs> mchanga and they, wapi? <laughs> and they say Taskis beba beba has a good one. Eh? <laughs> Anakuambia Taskis beba beba kuna kunayo mzuri sana. <laughs> but anyway, this uh, whatever they used to mold stuff, eh? If you use that mold to make, for example, a man and say, this is my dad. And then you wanted to, to, to make a, a boy out of it. And you realize you had used the whole of it to make uh, the father. So what you do is just break one hand, isn't it? Are, are you following? And then use that hand to make a, a little boy. And then smash back the original one and redo the man, isn't it? Hey, come on, are you understanding? So when now you are describing a boy wakatu that you have una, met, mdogo, do you say this boy is a hand? Uyu kijana ni mkono. Do you say this is a hand? Uyu ni mkono. What do you say? It's a boy, isn't it? Uyu ni kijana. That means from the beginning. Ivo basi kutoka mwanzo. You can no longer then call a woman a rib. Because only that part was taken to form a, 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 a whole human being. So a woman is complete in herself. And by the way, God did not form her later. 
Mungu hakumuumba baadaye. Because say, he said let us form man. Alisema wote tuumbe mwanadamu. Genesis 1:26 in our own image and after our own likeness. Tumuumbe kwa mfano wetu na kwa He said and he made them. Inasema aliwaumba male and female. Mwanamke na mwanamume. If you go to Genesis chapter 5 He says this is the genealogy of man on the day that God formed him. Inasema hivi ndivyo mwana mwanadamu aliyoumba kutoka mwanadamu aliumba. He made him in the likeness of God. Alimu aliumba kwa mfano wa Mungu. Verse 2 what does it say? Mstari wa pili unasema He said he created the male and female. Aliwaumba mwanamume na mwanamke. And bless them and call them mankind na kawaita mankind akawaita wanadamu binadamu the day that they were created they is true isn't it they ni kumaanisha wawili if you read the original text it says he called them adam ukisoma mwanzo inasema aliwaita Adam. So Adam was a name that encompasses all of us. Kwa hivyo Adam ni jina ya mwanaume na mwanamke wote. And that is why when Eve was taken when he woke up and realized somebody else has been made. Na wakati Adam aliona Eve aliamka akaona Eve akaona mtu amemtengeneza. Flesh like my own flesh. Akasema huyu ni ni nyama kama zangu. Born like my own bone. Mifupa kama mifupa so she be called woman. Kwa hivyo ataitwa mwanamke. Meaning the same as me. Kumaanisha yeye ni kama mimi. The only difference is that she has a womb. She is a woman, womb man. Kumaanisha anaitwa mwanamke kwa nini? Kwa sababu ako na womb. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but the man was not lonely but was alone. Lakini mwanaume hakuwa na upweke lakini alikuwa peke yake. That is why God did not actually make somebody different because Mungu hakuumba mtu tofauti because he created only once. Kwa sababu aliwaumba mara moja. But he went back and made making and creating are two different words. Kuumba na kutengeneza ni vitu tofauti. To create is to make out of nothing. Kuumba ni kutengeneza kutoka kwa But to make kitu. is to form an already existing thing. Lakini kutengeneza ni kutengeneza kitu ambacho kimekuwa. So God what God was saying? Kwa hivyo Mungu alikuwa anasema Remember aji. Adam was two in one, isn't it? The 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 man that God created did not have gender. They don't have sex, eh? Yes, U, ule mtu ambao Mungu alikuwa ameumba hawakuwa wana utofauti. He was both male and female. Walikuwa mwanamume na mwanamke. God says no it's not good for him to look like this I'll separate. Mungu akasema si vizuri akae hivi nitawagawanya. That's why God at appropriate time brings them together so that they go to the original plan. Ndio Mungu anataka watu warudi kutoka kwa mwanzo. That is why Ndio maana if now you understand the mind of God Ukielewa mawazo ama mafikira ya Mungu. You know that the expression of man is different from the expression of a womb man. Utajua ya kwamba kuelezea mwanamume ni tofauti na kuelezea mwanamke. Any time mwana you try mke. to do what a man does, kila wakati ukijaribu kufanya vile mwanamume anafanya, you can only be second to the man. Unaweza kuwa tu namba 2 kutoka But if you do mwana what a woman is meant to do, lakini ukifanya vile mwanamke ukifanya vile mwanamke anafaa kufanya That means you can come to the peak of your uh, accomplishment. Unaweza enda uifanye mpaka ikue kamili kabisa. So I want you to get it that Kwa when I'm speaking about strength. Nataka uelewe ya kwamba tukiongea kuhusu nguvu. I'm not talking about the male expression of strength. Sielezei ati ukuonyesha nguvu zako that the way a man expresses his strength is the way now because we are together we are equal eh? ati vile uh-huh. mwanaume anaonyesha nguvu zake ndivyo na utafanya there is a way a woman expresses her strength that is so powerful kuna vile mwanamke anaweza onyesha nguvu zake zikuwe za ajabu sana and that is how god meant it na hivyo ndivyo mungu alitarajia and so he said i'll create a help mate Mungu akasema nitakuumbia msaidizi. Someone who is suitable for him. Msaidizi ambaye atakutoselesha. The word used there for helpmate. 
Hiyo neno msaidizi is the same word used for the Holy Spirit. Ndilo neno ambalo limetumiwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. So anytime you want to express strength you must ask yourself how does the Holy Spirit express strength? Wakati unataka kuonyesha nguvu zako lazima ujiulize Roho Mtakatifu anaonyesha nguvu zake kivipi? Eh? Do you know that the Holy Spirit works incognito, isn't it? Unajua ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anafanya kazi kabisa. John chapter 3 verse 8 he says the man that is filled of the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You know where it comes from but you do not know where it goes to. Mtu ambaye anaongozwa na Roho Mtakatifu ni kama upepo, haujui unatoka wapi wala huendako. It means inamaanisha that he can say something without speaking with words. Ya kwamba anaweza sema kitu bila kuongea kwa mdomo. Hallelujah. Amen. He is able to express himself without causing attention to himself. And also without looking like somebody else. I know the subject has come about uh, I'm the one who carried you for nine months. Najua kuna msemo unasema ya kwamba mimi ndio nimekubeba miezi tisa. But if you look at biology, lakini ukiangalia biolojia, the men carry children for the longest time. Wanaume wanabeba watoto wakati mrefu sana. Do you know what we go through as men? Unajua. Some of us have carried children for 30 years. Wengine wamebeba watoto miaka zaidi ya 30. Just inside of us. Without moods, without Mila kuonyesha, mila mamu. And then we hand it over for you for just the next six months. Na basi tunakupatia mizi tisa peke yake. And then there is all drama about it. He said, I don't like protein, I don't like this, I don't like red, I don't like colors. But we lived with all those things, carrying them inside of us. So the way you express your strength is different from the way male express their strength. I want to tell you, my dear sister, stop being like men. Nataka kukuambia wacha kukuwa kama You are powerful enough as, as a woman. Uko sawa kabisa kama mwanamke. And you'll drain yourself trying to be what you are not. Na utajiumiza bure ukijaribu kukaa vile sio There are people who have and do not also get yourself into the stereotype of the society of what strength is all about. Kuna watu wanajaribu lakini hawafikii kujua The society's description of who is strong is very different from God's perspective of strength. Vile vile eneo linaonyesha nguvu ni tofauti sana na vile Mungu anaonyesha nguvu. For example, when a woman is at the marketplace and the CEO of a company is looked at as strong, iron lady. Wakati mwanamke yako mahali kama kiongozi ama mwanzilishi wa kampuni fulani anataka kujionyesha yes ni mimi. But when you say you are just a homemaker taking care of your children you don't look such strong. Lakini kama wewe unakaa nyumbani unaangalia watoto wako hauonekani kama wewe ni uko na nguvu. say with your degree you, you, God did not take you to school just to be a housewife. Unaulizwa ya kwamba wewe na degree yako yani Mungu hakukupeleka mahali alikuacha tu kae kwa nyumba kama housewife I came to tell you that there is nothing wrong about being a housewife Na kuambia hakuna kitu mbaya Some of the strongest women in this world has contributed immensely by being housewives Mambo mengi sana makubwa yamefanyika katika hii dunia ni kwa sababu ya wale wanawake ambao wamejitolea kukaa kama housewife. Look at mbani. Susanna Wesley for example. Mwangalie Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley. Eh uh, Susanna Wesley. Well, uh, got married at 19 years. Aliolewa akiwa na miaka 19. Gave birth to 19 children. Aka pata watoto 19. I know. I know. What happened to hard work? Eh? Ile kujitolea ilienda wapi? Yeah, kujitolea, eh? 
siku hizi watu hawajitolei <laughs> children watoto 19 a few years in her marriage miaka kadhaa katika doa yake she lost nine children akapoteza watoto tisa then lost another twin alafu tena akapoteza mapacha another one was smothered by the the housemaid mwingine aka akauliwa na msichana wa nyumba so he remained with eight children akabaki na watoto nane. this girl huyu msichana was married to Samuel, Samuel who is who was uh, a minister alikuwa ameolewa na minister who is who was always away preaching the word in cities but never coming home yeye alikuwa tu nje kila mara yeye ni kuhubiri na huko nje hakuwa anakuja nyumbani and then she was taking her children to a church na, lakini yeye alikuwa anapeleka watoto wake shule she realized that the theology was not correct wakati walijua ya kwamba theology haikuwa so she so, she learned the word by herself aka chukua akawafunza neno yeye mwenyewe and then decided every sunday i'm going to teach my children the word akaamua kila jumapili nitakuwa nafundisha watoto wangu a few neighbors in that neighborhood started to hear what susanna was doing ah uh, neighbor hapo karibu akasikia akajua vile susanna alikuwa and then they also started coming in basi wakaanza kukuja a time a certain time she was hosting like 200 people 300 people in her house wakati fulani akakuwa na pokea watu 300 200 teaching her pasi. children the word of god kufundisha watoto wake neno la mungu and then teaching her about school na kuwafundisha kuhusu shule she raised her children by herself alilea watoto wake mwenyewe as a housewife kama bibi wa nyumba and that is where we get charles wesley and john wesley na ndio tulipata Charles Wesley na So today we sing about Charles Wesley and we say John Wesley contributed immensely. Leo tunasema ya kwamba John Wesley amefanya hivi. And contributed towards the Methodist movement. Na ame amechangia sana katika kanisa la Methodist. But movement. if you look carefully. Lakini ukiangalia vizuri. The greatest contribution came from a woman. Hiyo kuchangia sana kulitoka kwa mama yake. Who decided and I'm not going to give my children to the world I'm going to teach them the word. Yule alisema sitaachilia watoto wangu wapotee dunia. Many of us want to show our strength to the world. Watu wengi sana tunataka kuonyesha nguvu zetu kwa dunia. And do great projects to different people. Tunafungua ma mambo makubwa kwa watu tofauti. I wish you only took care of those two children. Na ingeomba ungechukua tu muda ya kufundisha watoto. Those children can impact generations. Alafu watoto watafanya mambo makubwa katika dunia. But today we are releasing our children to rehab. Lakini tunachukua watoto wetu tunawapeleka rehab and then open a children's home. Alafu so, tunaenda so, tunafungua children's so home. So you are helping people's children and contributing yours to another rehab. Yaani we una, unasaidia watoto wengine na wako unapeleka kwa rehab. So her strength was not like those days where she seated at the public square and arguing with people. No. Nguvu zake hazikukua kukaa huko nje na kuanza kubishana na watu. Her strength was manifested through her children. Nguvu zake zilionekana kutoka kwa watoto wake. And she did great. Na alifanya mambo makubwa. That's why by the time she left ndio maana wakati aliondoka her children were shaking this world watoto wake walitingisha dunia by manifesting her strength kwa sababu ya kuonyesha nguvu zake look at life like anna for example in first samuel chapter 1 angalia kitabu cha anna kutoka samueli wa kwanza mlango wa remarkable woman you see samuel contributed immensely to the growth of israel as a nation Samuel alichangia sana kukua kwa Israeli. The Bible doesn't speak a lot about Anna. Biblia haiongei sana kuhusu Hana. But Anna's contribution you cannot ignore it in the life of Samuel. Lakini kuchangia kwa Anna hauwezi ukakupuuzilia kwa maisha ya Samuel. Behind Samuel was Anna's. Nguvu za Samuel zilitokana na Anna. She was not at the marketplace. Hakukuwa huko nje akitangaza. She was not showing the biceps and the precepts. Hakuwa anaonyesha nguvu zake na uh-uh. muscles. But in simplicity. Lakini kwa undogo tu wake. You see if you look at the strength of the kingdom of God you relate it to the strength of a woman. Ukiangalia nguvu za ufalme wa Mungu na nguvu za mwanamke. Because the way the kingdom grows is like this. 
Inasema vile ufalme wa Mungu unakuwa ni kama hivi. the kingdom of God is like living. Ufalme wa Mungu ni kama hiyo mbegu. Chachu. 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 That you place in door. Ambayo unaweka. Tutumie baking powder ama sio watu wanaelewa. Mnaelewa baking powder? Naweka kwa kitu inafanya nini? But una feature pale, si ndio? You don't announce it. It is not announced. Haitangazwi. That's how a, a woman rules through her strength. A mwanamke kupitia kwa nguvu zake. You don't stand and say I'm strong like I can do the same no. Hausimami useme mimi niko na nguvu naweza fanya hivi. It's through influence. Ni kupitia kwa That living goes through influence. Hiyo inapitia ku, ku, ku influence hiyo. Do you know you, you can enter a home? Unaweza enda nyumbani? And everybody is talking. Na kila mtu anaongea. But the king maker is the lady. Lakini mm-hmm. ule mfalme ni mwanamke. Eh. Lakini aonge. Amemoza tu. But her strength. Lakini nguvu zake. When I was growing up. Wakati nilikuwa nakuwa. We had a powerful grandmother. Tulikuwa na Shosho wa kipekee sana. She, she will not talk a lot. Hakuwa naongea sana. But her presence, her, just her presence. Lakini uwepo wake kukua tu kwake mahali pale. Maybe the reason why you're losing strength is that you're talking too much. Hmm? Labda vile unapoteza nguvu ni kwa sababu unaongea sana. But that lady when <laughs> you know she would she would know the cattle are not fed properly just by entering the gate she looks at her cows. Akiingia tu kwa gate alikuwa anaangalia ng'ombe zake. Then you without any prompting. Na wewe bila hata kusema kitu. You just state your defense. Unaanza kujitetea. Kabla hajauliza unaanza kujitetea. You, you might have noticed the cows are not well fed. Unasema labda umeona ng'ombe hazijakula vizuri. These are the reasons. <laughs> Ni kwa sababu ya hivi na hivi. Look at her expression. Angalia vile anaelezea. But it's like that leaven that is put in dough, isn't it? Ni kama hiyo powder ambayo imewekwa. Today you enter in such setups you, you just see competition. Leo ukiingia mahali pale unaona tu mashindano. Or you see a man that is emasculated that before he thinks about something he, he needs to look around and say, eh? Uliza mama. Unaona mtu ambaye ako na nguvu sana kabla hajasema kitu anasema uliza mama. But allow the man to be the man. Lakini kubali mwanamme akuwe mwanamme. But exhibit your power and your strength through the feminineness that God has called you. Lakini we onyesha nguvu zako kupitia kule kunyenyekea ambao Mungu amekupatia. Can you say hallelujah? Sema hallelujah. Now how do you know your strength? Unajua aje nguvu zako. How do you know your strength? Unajua aje nguvu zako. It is very interesting. Ina Butia sana that strength is never known ya kwamba nguvu hazieleweki until the presence of strength is tested mpaka hizo nguvu zinajaribiwa for example how do you know the strength of a plane kwa mfano utajua aje nguvu za ndege by testing it isn't it kwa kujaribu There's a manufacturer of air, air, airplanes called Lockheed. Lockheed is a manufacturer. Uh, Lockheed ina inatengeneza. And, and that's they say when they are they are making a new model. Wakati wanatengeneza ndege mpya. Before they release it to the market. Kabla waiachilie iende kwa duka. They set it under pressure. Wanaiweka kwa pressure. Then many gallons of water are placed inside the plane. Alafu maji mingi inawekwa kwa kwa ndege ndani. And then you change the positions of the weight of the water to check the center of gravity. Alafu unaangalia unaweka maji uzito mahali tofauti tofauti ndio ujue nguvu za hiyo ndege. You are passing it through high waves. Alafu unapitia kwa kwa hizo wave mingi. And then a lot of wind. Na hiyo upepo. And then ice conditions na barafu for many hours kwa masaa marefu if that plane is able to 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 persevere to the end kama 
kama hiyo ndege itaweza kuendelea mpaka mwisho then you use the same specification to make another one basi wanatumia huo muundo kutengeneza that ndege means it has passed the test kumaanisha imepita majaribio so the strength is not seen by her achievement the woman kwa hivyo nguvu zake hasipatikani na yale mambo ame but Fanya. by the obstacles of her life lakini kupitia kwa yale mambo amepitia na ameshinda yale mambo anapitia is what determines her strength ndio inaonyesha nguvu zake and when you subject it to high temperatures and high pressures na wakati umeipeleka kwa joto mingi zaidi that's how you know this one is strong utajua kweli huyu ako na nguvu and then i can trust basi naweza muamini it is also interesting how god finds out our strength ndivyo ayakia jabu sana hata vile mungu anapata nguvu zetu that's why i now want to go to this scripture ndio maana naenda kwa hii mstari wa biblia before i read the second corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 the way one we read wa korinto wa pili na mstari wa 7 let's go to the book of judges chapter 3 and we read two verses from there twende kwa kitabu cha waamusi Judges chapter 3 verse 1. Waamusi 3 mstari wa 1. Judges chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Let's read together ladies, what does it say? Mhm. How many people have not formally known it? Ni watu wangapi hawakuwa wanaijua? How many people attended this meeting who formally do not know who? Ni watu wangapi ambao wamekuja kwa huu mkutano na Come on ask your neighbor do you know the words? So God is able to expose you to certain words. Mungu ako karibu kukuonyesha ama kukudhihirisha kwa mambo fulani not to break you sio kwa kukuvunja but to teach you to war lakini kukufundisha vita the pain you go through hiyo machungu unapitia they are not death pains sio machungu ya kukuua they are labor pains ni machungu ya kupata mtoto it is pain that has a good end ni machungu ambayo iko na mwisho mzuri so you realize if god wants to strengthen you on certain areas of your life unapata kama mungu anataka kukutia nguvu kwa mambo fulani maishani you need certain people around you to teach you, to teach you that kind of war anakuletea watu fulani ambao ni wa kukufundisha vita kama hivyo and you are going to learn it na utaenda kusoma because god is going to expose you to that kind of war kwa sababu mungu ataku atakupitisha kwa hiyo vita so it's not meant to kill you uh-uh. haiko ili kumalize come on be strong kuwa na nguvu some of us because you have a weak spine god is going to subject you to something mungu anaenda kuku kukuonyesha kwa kitu fulani because that's how you are strengthened kwa sababu ndio maana umetiwa nguvu so if you see an athlete running for maybe 9 seconds or 10 seconds ukiona mkimbizi anakimbia kwa sekunde 9 ama 10 especially look at the heavy lifters the weight lifters angalia hao watu wanainua vitu mzito mzito they lift like for a very few seconds did you notice wanainua kwa sekunde kidogo tu maybe, maybe just 5 seconds labda sekunde tano they put it down na wanaweka chini and you say that guy is so strong unasema huyo mtu ni but you see that 5 seconds is not the story of his life lakini sekunde tano sio story ya maisha yake he has taken years to practice amechukua miaka kujaribu he has taken years to take care of his diet amechukua miaka kujaribu he has gone through so much amepitia mengi for 5 seconds of glory kwa sababu ya hiyo sekunde tano za utukufu and that's why you realize for what god prepares you to do as a woman na ndivyo unaona vile mungu anakutayarisha kufanya kama mwanamke for only that 5 seconds of shining yeah? kwa sababu ya hizo sekunde tano za kungaa so that people are going to celebrate you ili watu waende wakakushereheke yet they are not private to your to your to your story 
Hila hawajui yale umepitia. Now get us back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7. Wa Korinto wa 2:4 mstari wa 7 This is what God says. Hivi ndivyo Mungu anasema. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Hmm? We have this take us back to 7 we have this treasure. Tuko na e mm. rasilimali. Rasilimali in earthen vessels. Katika e Vyombo vya udongo eh. <laughs> Vyombo vya udongo. Eh yeah. ndio hiyo hapo. Yes. Hmm? Ili ionekane wazi kwamba nguvu hiyo kuu yatoka kwa Mungu wala si kwetu sisi si mwenyewe. Verse 8. Daima tupata taabu lakini hatu Tuwapata mashaka lakini hatu Now give us the English of that. Verse 8. We are hard pressed on every side. We are hard pressed. Who can testify that? Tumeskumwa sana. To be pressed means what? Kuskumwa inamaanisha nini? To be pressed means to be flattened. Inamaanisha ku kuwekwa chini. Means to smoothen by application of pressure. Inamaanisha kusukuma kabisa na nguvu fulani. That means a woman's life is pressed. Ya kwamba nguvu za mwanamke zimefinywa. You say you face a lot of pressure. Umepitia ma about mingi. different expectations. Ah uh, ya yenye yana matarajio tofauti. The demands of your life Uh, mambo ambayo yanakutarajia wewe pressure on your life yanakusukuma zaidi maisha the bible says you are not crushed lakini biblia inasema hauishi crush means you 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 are not dismayed ni kumaanisha yani hau hauangami you do not lose hope haupotezi maono so there are things that people would not believe if they hear that you've gone through Ingawaje watu watasikia mambo ambayo umepitia hawataamini. is that you are not crushed. Lakini Biblia inasema hautaangamia. And the pressures that are upon your life are not to crush you. Na hizo nguvu ambazo zimefinyiliwa si za kukumaliza. But out of it God is bringing something beautiful. Lakini kutoka hapo Mungu anatengeneza kitu. Come on look at your neighbor and say you will not be crushed. Even the pressure that you are going through right now you will not be crushed. Hata zile nguvu ambao unapitia hautamalizika. Ah you are not going to lose hope. Hautapoteza tumaini. The pressure will come and go. Hiyo nguvu zitakuja na zitaisha. But at the end of that pressure. Baada ya hizo nguvu. You are going to still remain standing. Utaenda kusimama wima. You say we are hard pressed on either side. Tumesukuma pande zote. If there is a life that is hard pressed is your life. Kama kuna maisha ambayo imekuwa na kusukumwa ni maisha yako. You have to look at so many things and balance. Unaangalia mambo mengi unajaribu ku It's like these people who are balancing this boss. Have you ever seen that? Ushaiona watu wanafanya wana balance hizi vitu. You have like five balls you're throwing up. Kuna mipira mitano unarusha juu. Alafu na ibalance yote. When you are depressed a little bit two balls are going to fall. Wakati umefinyika sana unaona kama mipira mbili itaenda kuanguka. And one of those balls might be your marriage. Na hizo mipira labda ni ndoa yako. One of those balls may be your children. Mpira mmoja ni kama watoto wako. So with the time you find you have two balls but it's only your career and something else. Wakati mwingine utajipata na mipira mbili labda ni kazi yako na kitu kingine So you must not lose focus. Lazima usipoteze maono. So I am hard pressed on either side. Unasema ya kwamba hata kama nimesukuma kila pande. But I will not be crushed. Sitamalizika. Because I have strength. Kwa sababu nina nguvu. Our strength sometimes looks like weakness. Nguvu zetu wakati mwingine zinakaa kama Yesu. Because it like weakness inakaa kama ni udhaifu wetu because it is not expressed like the society thinks kwa sababu haionyeshi kama jambo la kitaifa huh? oh, a national thing eh? <laughs> give us that verse verse 8 verse 8 eh? mstari wa 8 <laughs> 
Verse 8. Jambo la kitaifa. <laughs> we are perplexed, but not. What does it mean to be perplexed? Inamaanisha aje. Perplexed means when you find somebody who is perplexed. Ukipata mtu ambaye amekuwa na thiki. Mean, meaning that you are bewildered. Labda umetupwa jangwani. This is something of your mind. Hii ni jambo la Something that you cannot understand. Kitu ambao huwezi elewa. Come on ladies have you ever had questions? Ushakuwa na hiyo maswali. Something happens in your life and you can't understand it. Jambo linakufanyikia hata we mwenyewe huelewi. You wonder I have done everything right. What happened? Unasema nimejaribu kufanya vizuri imetokea nini? It's like you you come home and you're waking up in the morning to go to church and your house uh, director tells you I'm also leaving. Unaamka asubuhi unajitayarisha uende nyumbani alafu na yeye msichana wako wa nyumba anakuambia hata mimi naenda. So you start wondering what what happened what did we say yesterday? Unajiuliza kwani tuliisema aje jana? Ah uh, uh, things will happen in your life that you can't understand. Vitu zitatokea maishani mwako zenye hautaelewa kabisa. And there are so many things that are going to bewilder you. Na ni mingi sana ambazo zitakufanya ukae kama uko jangwani. Relationships around you that are going to bewilder you. Ushirikiano utaenda kukufanya ukae kama uko jangwani. Things that you have done according to the book but you will not understand. Vitu ambavyo umefanya vizuri lakini huelewi. But yet even in that confusion. Hata kwa huo mchanganyikio you do not despair. Hautaangamia. You don't lose heart. Hautapoteza maono. Because you see Life is not linear, my dear friends. Maisha si si laini tu straight. Life is not a straight line. Maisha sio straight line. But if I did this I'll get this results. Ati nitafanya hivi nipate hivi. If I did this I'll get this results. Ati nikifanya hivi nitapata matokeo haya. How do you explain a 2 year old with cancer? Basi utaelezea aje mtoto wa miaka 2 cancer ni nini? You can say this one Uh, they did live, live properly so they ate wrong they didn't exercise so he got cancer isn't it what, what mambia, about vizuri, exercise, ndio maana walipata what about cancer? a three year old what did he do na mtoto wa miaka 3 alifanya nini there are some people who have done everything they can but their marriage will not just not work right kuna watu wamejaribu kufanya vile wanafaa wafanye lakini ndio yao haifanyi when something like that happens people think oh what did she do wakati jambo kama hilo limefanyika unajiulizanga ni nini nilifanya a woman is made to nurture and to take care of so she, she you always think that this it must have been my mistake kwa sababu mwanamke ni wa kutengeneza na kulea anajiuliza anasema labda ni mimi nilikosea i cannot forget what a lady who told me uh, he just slapped me beat me but i'm thinking myself what did i do Alini chapa kanigonga lakini tena nikajiuliza kwani nilifanya nini I think he had no choice because I had talked to him Lakini naona ni kama hakuwa na jambo lingine la kufanya You see no matter how you talk you Labda nilimwongelesha vibaya uh, No matter how you talk he doesn't give people permission to slap you right Hata ukiongea haje hakuna mahali unapatia mtu so nafasi ya kukuchapa You'll reach places that you can't explain Unafika mahali unakuwa hata wewe ulezi elezea. Yeah, you can't explain. Huwezi ukaeleza. But do not despair. Lakini usiangamie. Don't lose hope, don't lose heart. Usifunjike moyo ama usipoteze maono. Your strength can still come up. Nguvu zako zinaweza kuja tena. And there are valleys that you are going to pass through that you won't believe that it is you that passed through that valley. Eh? Zile mambo ambao unapitia utaenda kujiuliza ni mimi kweli ni Come on look at your neighbor and say do not despair. Angalia mwanzako mwambie usiangamie. Do not despair. Usiangamie. Hold on to it. Shikilia. Come on give us verse 9. Mstari wa 7. Wa 9. Wa 9. Verse 9. Mstari wa 9. I'm concluding with this. Persecuted. But not struck down but not See, to be persecuted ku kudhiwa is to be ill treated. Ni kukua ume umefanyiwa mambo mabaya. To be disrespected. Yaani kupotezewa heshima. 
when somebody can just decide to be malicious on you mtu anaamua tu akue yani mbaya tu kwako to be mean to you akue mbaya yani asikupatie kitu to not treat you right yani asikufanyie vile inafaa the problem is if you are not careful shida ni ya kwamba kama haujaangalia vizuri with the time you start assimilating people response to you wakati mwingine utafikia mahali uanze ku chukua mambo ya watu wengine kama ni considering yourself like people treat you right unaanza kujibeba vile watu wamekufanyia have you seen somebody who was mistreated in her relationship until she thought she doesn't deserve unshawe huh? yona mtu ambao ame amefanyiwa vibaya katika uhusiano fulani mpaka akafikia mahali akaona alikuwa anafaa tu kufanyiwa I, I am not beautiful ama si yuko mrembo you pass through life until you start seeing i'm not beautiful at all unapitia mambo katika maisha mpaka unasema ah mimi hata si yuko mrembo but looking at you say my goodness i wish i had her face kila mtu anakuangalia anasema ah hebu muangalie uso yake because beauty is not what you see beauty is mm? kwa sababu Urembo si ule unaona urembo ni kutoka kwa moyo. You can paint it red but if the heart does not perceive it as red. <laughs> Unaweza jipaka lakini kama haijatoka moyoni yeah. haitaonekana. We say that men are color blind but there are ladies also who are color blind. Tunasemanga wanaume ni color blind lakini hata wanawake kuna wengine ni color blind. There are ladies who don't see their colors rightly. Kuna wanawake ambao hawaoni rangi zao vizuri. So you are persecuted. Kwa hivyo uliteswa. The problem with persecution is that you enter in a place of loneliness. Ni kumaanisha yani unaenda mahali pa upweke. You feel like the world is against you. Unasikia ni kama dunia yote imekugeuka. And that you are alone. Na uko peke yako. God is saying we are perplexed. Biblia inasema Mungu anasema ya kwamba tunafinywa. We are persecuted. Tuna Udhiwa. People around us have treated us ill. Watu karibu nasi wanatufanyia mambo mabaya. The goodness is that we are not forsaken. Lakini uzuri ni ya kwamba hatujaachwa. We don't feel alone. Hatusikii upweke. Because God is with you. Kwa sababu Mungu ako nasi. Hallelujah. Amen. The last one is struck down. Ya mwisho ni struck down. Kupigwa chini. To struck down now is the mother of all blows. Kupigiwa chini ndiye mama yake wa wote. To strike down is to strike down is to surprise with a blow. Kupigiwa chini ni kama ku kupuliziwa. Kushutuliwa. Mhm, mm kushturiwa. Ama tusema kupuzi, ku, 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 puziliwa nini? Mshtuko. <laughs> Kushtuliwa. Has has anything ever happened in your life abruptly? Yaani kuna jambo limekufanyikia tu kwa ghafla. You, you didn't plan about it. Inatoka tu mahali popote. Yaani haukuwa unaitarajia kama. You know life is very interesting my sisters. Unajua maisha inafurahisha sana. Five years I'll do this, in 10 years I'll do this, in 15 years I'll do this. Miaka 10 ijayo, miaka 5 ijayo nitafanya hivi. Then while you are thinking about it. Lakini unapoendelea kufikiria hivyo. A calamity just comes. Jambo fulani janga linakuja linatokea. Track you down. Inakupiga chini. It's a blow, is a certain sudden blow. Niyo mshtuko wa kipekee. From nowhere that you didn't plan about it. Unatoka tu yenye haukuwa unitarajia. You didn't did foresee it. Haukuwa hata unaiona. And it turns your your world round about. Inakupindulia ama inakubandilishia dunia kabisa. Or wrong side up. Inaku pindushe kubandilishia dunia and you wonder what did i do unashangaa nilifanya nini but the bible says you will not be destroyed lakini biblia inasema hautaangamia but not destroy you know to destroy is to annihilate unajua kuharibu ni kumaliza kabisa to erase kuondoa there are things that are happening in your life that the devil meant to erase you from the face of the earth kuna mambo yanakufanyikia duniani shetani alikuwa na nia ya kukuondoa duniani but god has promised to preserve you lakini mungu ameahidi atakufanya come on look at your neighbor and say you will not be erased ambia dudu you will not be destroyed you will not be destroyed cheer up amen you will not be destroyed 
track down. You, are, you may be down but you are not out. Unaweza kuwa chini lakini hautaangamia. You struggle to face tomorrow but you face it anyway. Utangangana ili ufikie kesho utaipata tu bado. Have you ever gone to a hiking that you arrive on the top of the mountain with almost going on your knees? Ushaenda kupanda mlima ukienda kufikia kilele pale unasikia hata miguu imeisha nguvu. But the good news is that you have arrived anyway. Lakini uzuri ni kwamba umefika kilele. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.